In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to make financial stock photos in Blender that you can use for yourself or uh, let other people use. I'm not going to show you how to sell them, but I'm going to show you how to make them. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off with the 3D bar chart. So press tab for edit mode, and then press G, set, then one to move it one unit on the z-axis. And as you can see, the origin point is now at the bottom, so that when you press S, then set, we scale from the bottom. And then next, we can press Shift D, X, then five. To move the duplication five units on the x-axis, then press Shift R to repeat the previous actions. Okay, and then next, we can scale them on the z-axis. So S then set to scale them on the Z axis and let's make them increase over time. And then next we can select all of them. So hold in shift to select multiple objects. Then set the transform pivot point to individual origins so that when we scale them on the X and Y axis by pressing S then shift set, we scale them all individually. Okay, and then next, we can go to File, Save As, and create a new save. You can, of course, save it wherever you want on your computer. And then next, we can make the arrow. So press Shift A, and then add a cube. And then press G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis, just to get some space. And then press Numpad 7 for a top view. And then we can press Tab for Edit Mode. And then go to face selection. Let's select this face. And then you can press G, then X to grab the face on the X axis. And then we can press E, left click, E, then Y to scale the extrusion on the Y axis. And then E, then X. And then S, then Y to scale it down on the Y axis. Then press tab for object mode. And then we can press S then X to scale the arrow on the X axis. And we can also press S then set to make it a bit thinner. Okay, and now we can create a new uh, save. So press Control Shift S, click on the plus sign and save. And now we're going to make the arrow curved. So uh, the first thing we need to do is to add some extra loop cuts. So press Ctrl R and use the mouse wheel to add some additional cuts. Let's add around 20 on this one and a bit less on the uh, end of the arrow. And then we can go to Edit, Preferences, and then make sure to enable the uh, Add Curve Extra Objects add-on, which is included for free in Blender. And then you can press Shift A, and let's add an arc. And let's go into the settings. And then we can increase the radius to make it larger. And increase the resolution as well. And then also increase the end angle value to uh, increase the uh, curvature of the curve. Okay. And then next, we need to rotate the curve. So press uh, Tab for object mode, and then press R, X, then minus 90. And we want the arrow to be curved in uh, this way. So let's select the arrow, and then go into the modifiers, and then add the uh, curve modifier. And then let's use the arc as the uh, curve object. And then we can move the arrow on the x-axis, press G, then X. And as you can see, the arrow is now nice and curved. So uh, I'm just going to save one more time. And then we can apply the modifier so that the curve no longer affects the arrow. And then we can press R, set, and then 180. And then R, Y, then minus 90 so that we get the right rotation for the arrow. 
and then let's move it a bit closer. So G to grab, G then X to grab it on the X axis, and then G then set to grab it on the Z axis. And then before we add the grid, we can save one more time. And I'm also going to scale one of the bars on the Z axis. And then let's delete the curve as well, as we no longer need it. And then we can add a plane, press S to scale. And because we're going to have both a grid and a floor, you need to press Shift D then set to duplicate and move the duplication on the Z axis. And then for the plane on the top, you need to press tab and then right click to subdivide and subdivide a few times until you have a grid pattern that you like. And then you can press tab to go back to object mode. And then we can add a wireframe modifier to turn this into a grid. And then make sure to decrease the thickness so that we get a thin grid. And if you want it to be even thinner than 0 0.001, you have to type it in manually. So let's set it to 0 0.0005, for example. And then we get a nice looking grid. And then next, we can add a material for the grid. And I'm just going to make it black. So let's set it to a uh, simple diffuse shader and make it black. And then next, we need to set up the lighting and the render settings. So uh, let's select the default light. And then I'm going to turn it into a sun. I'll set the strength to around 10. And then you can press R twice to rotate the sun freely. Okay, and then next we can go into the render settings and I'm going to use cycles and then the GPU if you have one. If not, just keep using the CPU. And this is what it looks like in rendered view before we have added the rest of the materials. And then I'm going to save, so click on the plus sign and uh, save. I'm also going to adjust the position of the grid on the Z axis. And then next, we can add a uh, color to the arrow. So uh, blue looks nice. And then for the uh, bar graph, we can uh, open a new window and add some variation to the uh, colors. So let's go in to the shader editor. And there is N. And then we can add some simple notes to uh, give it some variation. So let's add a, a simple glossy note first for the shader itself. And then we're going to press Shift A and add an object info node which gives us a random value we can use for the hue saturation. Okay, and then we're going to connect the random value to the saturation. And then connect color to color. And then you can add any color. As you can see, the material has been added to all of the bars already. And as you can see, we get some uh, variation in the saturation of these uh, objects. And then if you want to increase the uh, saturation even more, you can add another huge saturation node in the middle and then increase the value. And then once you're done with the material, we can add a background image as well to uh, get a, a bit better lighting in addition to the sun. So uh, go to open under environment texture, and then you can just add any free HDRI that you can find in the description. As you can see, we now have the background image and we're going to hide the background image and keep the light that we get from the background image. So uh, go to film and then transparent.
And then you can press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to set the camera to the current point of view. And then increase the end value for the camera so that the range of the camera increases. And if you want to, you can also change the aspect ratio of the render. So I'm going to make it uh, squared. And then you can select the camera and press G and use the middle mouse button to go backwards. You can also go to view and lock the camera to view. Okay. And then you can just do the final adjustments to the render. And then you can save one more time before we render. And then go to render. And then render image. And that's it. Thank you for watching and subscribe.